Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. A quick question to start today's episode for everybody. How can a century-old insurance company continue to innovate and meet the demands of today's digital-savvy consumers? Well, in today's episode, I'm joined by Nikki Manby, Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer at Mutual of Omaha, to explore this very question. And with over a 100-year history, Mutual of Omaha is not only staying relevant, but it's also leading the way in digital transformation within the insurance industry. So I've invited Nikki to share her insights on the company's approach to integrating new technologies, exploring alternative insurance models, while also enhancing customer experiences and maintaining operational excellence. So if you're interested in learning more about how Mutual of Omaha is balancing this rich heritage with the demands of a rapidly changing market, you are in for a treat today. And I think there's something in this episode for everyone, regardless of what industry you're in. Before we get today's guest on, I want to talk about the fact that defence contractors face immense pressure to comply with something called CMMC 2.0 security standards. And finding a secure, easy-to-use file sharing solution meeting those guidelines can be a major challenge. So if you are an IT admin in the defence sector, if you are tired of juggling complex security solutions, KiteWorks offers a game-changing approach to CMMC 2.0 compliance because their centralised policy management simplifies administration across the entire platform. What that means is no more productivity disruptions or difficult user training. They've done the heavy lifting with their FedRAMP authorization, so you don't have to. And yes, while other solutions complicate your workflow, KiteWorks streamlines it. So upgrade to KiteWorks and experience the perfect blend of security and simplicity. So if you're interested in accelerating your CMMC 2.0 compliance and begin addressing Federal Zero Trust requirements with KiteWorks as universal secure file sharing platform made for defence contractors, simply visit KiteWorks.com to get started, where you can learn more about this secure content platform for CMMC compliance. But now it's time to return to our regularly scheduled programming and welcome today's guest onto the mic. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way stateside, where you can sit down with myself and Nikki, where we'll talk about all this and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Nikki. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, This is Nikki Manby here. I'm the Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer for Mutual of Omaha. We're a Fortune 300 company here in the United States, uh, covering a wide range of solutions across the life, health, and wealth sector. So glad to be here. Well, I mean, you said that Fortune 300 company, and it's such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. But I think very often we only celebrate uh, the uh, success at the top of that mountain rather than the the (laughs) journey to the top there. So uh, can you tell me more about the journey and the the vision behind Mutual of Omaha? Because I suspect there is a big origin story there. I mean, a little research from myself revealed that the company has evolved since its founding in 1909 to meet the changing needs of your customers. And just to put that figure into perspective, I was reading um, a few days ago that from the Fortune 500, 52% have disappeared in the uh, since the year 2000 alone. So it, it is a phenomenal achievement what you uh, got here. But tell me a little bit more about the story behind the company. I I will. And I'll first say, you know, the statistic that you just mentioned about the um, fatalities in the Fortune 500 is something we talk about internally in terms of some of the reasons that innovation and continuing to innovate uh, are so very important because it's the only way you make it to becoming a hundred uh, hundred plus year old company, which we are. Uh, So you're right. 1909, we started really as a health and accident insurance provider in Omaha, Nebraska, about as smack dab in the middle of the United States as you can get. Uh, And we've grown really to serve almost 24 million Americans uh, with the wide range of products we have. I I think the constant really over the 100 plus years has been a simple principle um, in terms of what we're about, which is helping people in their time of need and helping them Uh, protect what they care about and achieve their financial goals. And of course, what financial goals look like and what customers want to protect has really changed over those hundred years. But, uh, but our mission really hasn't. Um, 
I'd, I'd say just a, a few other elements for those who might not familiar uh, be, be familiar with uh, us. We're really proud of having been one of the first companies to make insurance affordable and really accessible to the middle class in America. Uh, and we also distinguish ourselves by being a mutual company. You know, as a mutual, we're owned by our policyholders. We are really focused on being good stewards of our customers' dollars uh, and have a diversity of products to serve their needs, uh, but are always doing it uh, truly with the uh, the customer at the beginning, middle, and end of the story as a as a mutual. And insure tech really seems to be gaining momentum at the moment. Uh, it's a, a word I'm hearing more and more. So. You've seen a lot of this space evolve over the years. I'm curious, how are digital customer communications particularly transforming the insurance industry, and especially as life milestones shift and the definition of senior changes? 50 is the new 40, 40 is the new 30. So <laughs> what, what, that's what I say as I get older anyway, try and convince myself of that. But what innovative approaches are you ha- uh, taking at Mutual of Omaha this year? Anything you can share? Yeah, you know, the one thing I think that's really important is for us to, um, as I imagine all sectors are doing and all companies in, uh, you know, sectors across the range of services is really opening our aperture. You know, it's not about serving the customer in the way customers in our particular sector might have been used to uh, engaging. Um, Our communications, really, they're informed by the big tech companies out there. You know, our expectations of what it's like to uh, communicate in a community is shaped by Meta and by TikTok. Uh, Our expectations about shopping and the convenience of returns, that's being shaped by Amazon. There really isn't a brand out there that isn't being influenced by how customers' expectations are being shaped. So that's where the digital communication story really starts. Um, I think there are some myths out there about uh, seniors in the first place, that they're not uh, particularly technically savvy. Now, I know my mom still can't figure out all the buttons on the remote control, but she talks to her Alexa devices that are in every room in the house. So there really is, first and foremost, kind of a change in the tech savvy levels of seniors. But more importantly, as you mentioned, the milestones are shifting. Uh, we are are at a place where digital natives are going to be the largest share of the population. I think that's a prediction to happen somewhere in the 2040 range, but we're so well on our way. And consumers um, in insurance, I think, are adopting this in terms of how they learn about products. It's not just through their broker, uh, but the wealth of information and, frankly, even video formats that are really compelling online for consumers to navigate their own learning journey. Um, how they actually buy products, that digital journey has really changed, again, informed by the fact that most folks are used to being able to open up an app uh, to be able to engage in a transaction. So the insurance uh, sector has needed to adopt a lot of that self-service um, ability as well. And so I think those are primarily the ways in which consumer communications have changed. We do have some constraints in insurance that are probably a little different, health information, privacy associated with uh, many of the products that we deliver um, does put some pretty big barriers up in terms of how we communicate with customers. And we're always following their lead on how they want uh, to engage us, which is which is really an important tenet. And you mentioned expectations a few moments ago, and there's an old saying that the last best experience that any of us have anywhere becomes a minimum expectation for the experience that we then want mm-hmm. everywhere. And you used a few great examples about Amazon, etc. there. But can you elaborate on the, the value and potential of alternative insurance models and indeed delivery methods and mm-hmm. how you're not only adapting, but maybe leading some of these changes as well? Mm. Well, this is one of the areas that being the 100-year-old-plus company prevents uh, some good foundation, um, but also and we've got to remember the need to to change. Um, and so some of the alternative models that I think are most interesting really stem from, I think, some of the uh, rapid experience that consumers have with engaging in digital brands. Uh, so, you know, we're really starting to deeply examine 
what customer problems exist and how our insurance products uh, could really evolve to meet them a little better. And that's that digital experience that's fast and uh, very self-service that's that's an important overlay to this. So a couple of models that I can share that, you know, I'm watching. Um, the first is around micro insurance. Uh, you, you know, we think that consumers will continue to uh, demand coverage, maybe in a short period, could be a few hours a day while you're driving your car, could be a few days a month while maybe you're on a ski slope and you need some extra medical coverage. Uh, but one alternative model that I think we'll see further expansion in is this micro insurance. So I don't have to buy something for the rest of time, um, but I'm buying something for a very specific need um, that I've got that that is short term in in nature. Um, kind of a, kind of connected to that micro insurance concept is the concept of on demand insurance. Um, I, if I need protection in more of a bite size, then I need to be able to turn it on and off uh, when I think there's something that uh, I need a little extra coverage around. Now, consumers are turning things on and off all all day today these days as it regard, relates to things like you know their payment cards. You can turn your credit card on and off. These are some of the examples of how their experience in one industry will certainly translate to another. Um, you know, I'd probably say the last uh, new model worth mentioning perhaps will ultimately be the most prolific is the concept of embedded insurance. Uh, this is where consumers are, are out there doing something else and they can access an insurance product through the checkout flow. If the engagement with the consumer is digital to begin with, uh, we can tack on an opportunity uh, to be able to access insurance in the moment. So you might be buying that season pass for the ski lift and get your extra medical coverage right at the same time you're buying that season pass. Someday you might be you know, ordering your car online and picking all your features and colors and buy your car insurance at that same time. So as more and more products migrate to a digital platform in terms of how the customer reaches them, the greater the opportunity for protection products to be offered at that same point of purchase. So I think that's a, a model that uh, we'll continue to see expand. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And as we said at the very beginning of the podcast, technology, especially inshore technology or inshore tech, is making a significant impact throughout the entire insurance industry. So I'm curious, as someone right in the eye of the storm here, what are some of the most transformative technologies that you're seeing that are maybe shaping the future of insurance. Anything excite you? Anything you got your eye on here? You know, one of the things worth mentioning is a really a little bit of pattern that we see in insure tech having followed uh, the wave of fintech. You know, when a lot of the the fintech um, startups were really blossoming onto the scene, a lot of them had a little bit of a bravado about you know how they would unseat the big banks and really take over. Uh, how consumers thought about financial services generally. And over time, some of that dissipated. And instead, you know, fintechs really saw this opportunity to serve the banks rather than compete with them. And there are definitely some, uh, you know, uh, neo banks that have been successful, but building brands are really expensive. And a lot of the fintech um, uh, really explosion has been in serving banks. And we're seeing the same thing happening now in insure tech. So the greatest impact that insure techs are having in insurance today is not particularly customer facing, uh, but really in B2B solutions. Um, core technologies as insurance carriers have been successful in migrating to cloud and even multi-cloud models, employed APIs to connect legacy systems to modern tech platforms. This gives carriers the chance to now integrate with insure techs that are offering optimized solutions really at almost every category of an insurer's back in policy administration, our claims management, our lead generation. These are core capabilities that large carriers need. Insure techs are bringing new software solutions that enable us to improve our operational efficiency and enhance our customer experience, uh, ultimately create new competitive advantage. So that's where I'm really seeing the insure tech value proposition uh, today is is really in the B two B space for carriers more so than than what a consumer might see directly at the moment. 
And I think it was Steve Jobs who said, innovation distinguishes between the leader and the follower. So in your Mm -hmm. role as Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer there, is there anything you can share around the kind of strategies that you're implementing, how you're using tech to fuel growth for these specific customer segments at Mutual of Omaha? I appreciate you probably can't share too much, but is there anything you can? Yeah, you know, I think that one of the areas that we're uh, certainly seeing a lot of growth in today in terms of a specific customer segments is in what we call our group group benefits solutions. So this is where we provide products really to employers who in turn offer them to employees. Uh, And we've just experienced enormous amount of growth as employers themselves are uh, striving to be as competitive as possible. And that includes providing competitive benefits packages. So one of the places that we're really innovating, and I think it's the cross-section of a core corporate strategy and an innovation model, is thinking about how the nature of employment is changing, especially you know in a post-pandemic environment where uh, a lot of the workforce realized that, yeah, that there are different models for how they might be able to generate their income. I think uh, Google, in fact, has more contract workers today than they do have full-time employees. So you think about the cascading implication of that, where individuals who are used to receiving a full set of benefits from their employer may, are maybe now a little more on their own to figure out uh, how to cobble together the right set of protection solutions that they need. You know, We're certainly, unfortunately, continuing to see uh, a shift in layoff of full-time employees among big tech firms, and, and these contract hire models are increasing. So this is a little bit of a hot spot for us in terms of thinking about how the future of the workforce um, might change and how our benefits to employees uh, might change if the employer plays maybe a different role in the lives of individuals than it does today. So it's kind of an interesting area for us to uh, to innovate in. And I think one of the biggest pressures for business leaders in any industry is trying to figure out that very fine balance of ensuring operational excellence while also embracing innovation and new technologies. Is there anything you can share around how you're doing that at Mutual of Omaha in the insurance sector? You bet. And again, you're right that this is really critical. I think a lot of the competitive advantage that carriers are uh, leaning on today is optimized cost structures. Uh, and so operational excellence is a critical way to create capacity that can then be invested in growth. And so one of the ways that we do it, first and foremost, is really trying to broaden our scope beyond just the what, how can we save money? Uh, that if, that's part of it, because if we, if we can operate a little less expensively again, then we can take those bound resources and employ them into new products and new growth. Uh, But the other two pieces that we talk about alongside the cost optimization is the customer experience and the associate experience. So for us, operational excellence is about the journey that a customer is on and how can we improve that and be operationally excellent in delivering it. Um, And generally, the changes that we make with that strategic intent in mind tend to have a corresponding effect of cost dropping out of the system. And really, the same thing is true for our associates. You know, an area that we've done a, quite a bit of work in is around our customer service, our frontline associates. Mutual of Omaha feels it's very important for us to have those associates in-house. You know, we don't outsource to a call center under a different a, a different name. The experience that the associate has and how well equipped they are to serve our customers is a really important part of operational excellence. And uh, and we're really looking at the emerging technology uh, opportunities that generative AI creates um, to be a core tenant of operational ex- excellence value creation in the future. Uh, we could probably have a whole chat on generative AI and insurance uh, alone because the opportunities are enormous. And I think we're all trying to figure out the right pace of adoption um, so that we don't have too much new cost first when the effort and the intent uh, at the end is to achieve some operational excellence objectives. 
Well, I think we've both done amazing to last 22 minutes on a tech podcast without mentioning AI <laughs> or Gemini. <laughs> so you are correct. I think it is a topic for another um, episode, and I'd love to work with you on that. But right now, I mean, you're in a, a fantastic position right in the heart of the industry during this period of super fast technological change. So I'm curious, from what you're seeing, what are the the biggest challenges and equally opportunities that you're seeing in the insurance industry today, particularly mm. concerning those technological advancements and mm. matching them with those raising, uh, rising customer expectations? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the one that I'll raise is not unique to Mutual Omaha. Uh, I think it's true for the entire sector. Um, again, being decades old means you have a lot of legacy technology systems. And the challenge of integrating the old tech with the new tech is 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 sizable. Um, it makes it very difficult to keep pace with uh, change and just how rapidly we're seeing new opportunities evolve with new technology skills when in order to deliver with a new technology at scale, we've got to integrate it with a legacy system. Uh, so that's a big challenge. Uh, the second and it, I'd, I'd indicate is really kind of close to my heart around innovation. Um, you know, when you when you test in an in, a, in an insurance environment, uh, you're really making a commitment to a customer. You're selling them a life insurance policy. They're expecting uh, for you to be around for the duration of their life. Uh, many of the economic models that support insurance have very long payback periods. Uh, could be, you know, five, seven years for a business that's delivering a solution before they might break even on that product uh, and have the opportunity to to invest further. So that's a real challenge for innovation. It, um, unlike many other sectors who can test and learn and download a new app to you, and if it disappears in a month, you know, no, no harm, no foul. Uh, Mutual of Omaha is not going to disappear on anyone. So it does change the profile of of how we test, which potentially slows the the innovation cycle. Um, on the other hand, there's some great opportunity that accrues. We're a trusted brand. Um, engaging with Mutual Omaha comes with an expectation that we've rigorously tested new technology that we might use to support our solutions. And that extends to a pretty wide distribution network. We've got brokers and agents and advisors that are all out there uh, working to bring our solutions front and center for customers. And that's a whole new horizon of new technology opportunity. Uh, so I think that um, some of what we'll see in the future across our sector is how technology helps connect the dots between the players in the in the uh, sector that otherwise might not have been as connected. And, and the consumers will be the beneficiaries uh, because the communication between uh, these stakeholders will um, will be higher, greater and much more seamless. And if we look ahead, we've got one eye on 2025 already. Is there anything you're able to share about some of your key priorities and goals for continuously driving innovation, staying ahead in this rapidly evolving insurance space? And how do you envision the future of the company and the industry as a whole? Are you feeling pretty confident? Is there anything that excites you or keeps you up at night? (laughs) Well, the thing that is exciting is, you know, at Mutual Omaha, we many years ago ad- adopted an agile technology operating model uh and that's that's easier said than done in uh in a company uh with the the legacy models that we've got so i'm really optimistic about the ability for us to integrate uh, with a lot of the new developments that frankly might happen outside our walls. Um, I think the future of Mutual Omaha and companies like ours operating in insurance um, will mean that we don't have to do everything ourselves. Uh, partnering with others who are best in class and being able to move on to the best in class of tomorrow if uh, our original partners don't remain in that pole position this is going to open up a lot of doors. Uh, so I'm really excited about the future horizon of uh, partnerships, especially in the the technology arena. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting and inspiring uh, for the industry as a whole is 
how we will be able to change the scope of these solutions that are oriented around protection and and financial security into some new dimensions like financial wellness. We see huge correlation between financial wellness and physical wellness. And that's really interesting to help think about how solutions might come together to deliver on both. So I think the frame of what a consumer thinks of when they think of insurance is probably going to get a lot broader And that's really interesting to think about how we're just at the end of the day, focusing on what a consumer needs and not being super bounded by the type or flavor of products that we've delivered in the past. Uh, And financial wellness and its intersection with physical wellness is, I think, a space that uh, uh, physical and I should also say uh, mental wellness. These are spaces where I think we'll see a lot of convergence and um, a lot of new opportunities and new solutions for, for, uh, for consumers. And we've talked a lot about how Mutual of Omaha is evolving and improving with the pace of technological change. But as individuals, there's a a real pressure on all of us to be in a state of continuous learning now. So I've got to ask on a personal level, where or how do you self-educate? Anything you can share on on how you deal with this pace of change? Uh, You know, I love this question because most days I think I'm drinking from a fire hose. So (laughs) I'm well uh, situated in that state of continuous learning, as you described. Um, I think one key has been appreciating that the model really changes as I've gotten older, you know, where I in the past might have focused on education as my primary method of learning. Uh, You know, over the years, you, you sort of move into a model of exposure, uh, being a, a a way that you learn, just how that then evolves into experiences, which is probably where I anchor the most today. Um, making sure I'm in places where I can experience the the thoughts, ideas, and concepts of others. Uh, the, the putting yourself in circles where there's a great diversity of thought is really the primary way in which I learn. You know, you go to a conference these days; it's less about what's on stage. It's more about the individuals that you interact with in the hallway because you get to experience, you know, their points of view. And uh, I try to soak it in as as much as I can. So I now count you among those who I've (laughs) had the chance to uh, uh, to to visit with. And um, I think that blend of education, exposure and experience is something I try to to make sure I've got some balance in over time. Beautiful answer. So thank you so much. We've covered so much in a 30-minute conversation today, and I hope everyone listening has has learned a few things along the way too. But for anyone that wants to find out more information uh, about what we discussed or connect with you or your team, where would you like to point everyone listening? You can find me on uh, LinkedIn, both directly and, of course, Mutual of Omaha's presence there. And mutualofomaha.com really is a point of entry to almost anything uh, you would need. So I I look forward to hearing from those of you who uh, uh, are out there in the audience today. Fantastic. Well, I'll have links to everything to make that nice and easy so people can carry on that conversation. And as I said, we talked about so much that just the role of digital customer communications, especially as life milestones shift and the definition of what a senior is, is a huge thing on its own, but also the value of alternative insurance models and delivery, something we're seeing more and more, and especially insure tech, which is, again, another episode on its own. So I'd love to get you back on maybe later in the year or early next year. Let's talk about the AI thing and the impact that that's having. But more than anything, just thank you for sharing your time with me today. Thank you so much. I really I really will look forward to a, another discussion. And um, thanks again for your time. Wow, what a cracking conversation there. And it leaves me pondering, what does it take for an established company to remain agile in a fast-evolving industry? And for me, the conversation with Nikki today has shown that Mutual of Omaha is successfully navigating this challenge through digital innovation and strategic foresight. And by embracing things like new insurance models and leveraging cutting-edge technology, they're setting a powerful example for others in the industry to follow. But over to you. How will you ensure your organisation stays ahead in this ever-changing environment? You've heard from myself. You've heard from Nikki. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And as always, easiest guy in the world to find. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. If you want to email me, 
techblogwriter at outlook.com. So I'm expecting to see emails or DMs that say, hey, Neil, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Whatever it is, please let me know. If it's a question you want to share some thoughts, I'd love to have a conversation with you too. But that's it for today, so thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger.